come out of the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. Javier Zamorone, who you see in the blue trunks, trimmed with white. His opponent, Sebastian Santiago, in the white with neon yellow lettering. And yeah, when you got a guy like Robert Garcia making a trip across country for a four-rounder, you know that he thinks highly of his man. A vast difference in amateur experience, as we noted during their ring walks and off the top of our broadcast. Santiago came to the sport quite late, almost on a whim. Zamorone, obviously well-schooled, and you see it right there. A laser sharp left hand drops Santiago. Beautiful counter left hand from Zamorone. He set it up with the body jabs. He's using that southpaw stab jab. Remember, there is a extra knockout bonus if you can complete the task in the opening round. And Zamorone hunting for that and with plenty of time to work with here in the opening round. Santiago got up. He's looking, looking sturdy. His legs seem to be back under him. But Zamorone, man, he's throwing some laser left hands. Good right hand lands there from Santiago. Trying to work his way back into this fight. You mentioned the legs back underneath Santiago, but generally speaking, Santiago has looked a little bit off balance here in the opening round. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned the difference in amateur experience. You can see how classy Zamorone is in, in the way that he moves around the ring, where he's setting up his punches. But Santiago is full of heart. He's in there throwing shots. He's landing some shots, too. There's another straight right hand from Santiago, but Zamorone comes back. A couple, couple good counters there from Zamorone. A couple white hooks connect. Santiago on the canvas in the opening 40 seconds of this fight, and he eats another good left hand from Zamorone. Beautiful shot over the top. That was the same punch that dropped Santiago earlier in the round. Santiago had nerves heading into his first pro fight. He's had to work through them pretty quickly here in the opening round of his second pro fight as he eats another sharp left hand from Zamorone. Santiago's tough. He's in there swinging. I mean, he, he, he got hurt, obviously. He got dropped badly early in the round, but he's the guy pushing forward. He's landed some good right hands. You get the sense that Zamorone is almost allowing them to travel so that he can counter with that big right hook. Not showing a ton of respect for Santiago's power. Santiago continues to land. Zamorone oh. misses with the uppercut, but the left hand does not miss. Yeah, that full left hand, that's the shot that Zamorone's looking for. Santiago makes it out of round one. It makes it fun in our opening round. As round two begins, Chris, a couple moments ago, you pointed over to Zamorone's corner. You noticed some swelling over the right eye of Zamorone. We didn't want to be dismissive of Santiago's work. Clearly, it had some effect in the opening round. Ooh. Yeah, no, the, there's a pretty significant swelling over that right eye. It looks to be like a, like a small abrasion or bruise there. Didn't see ice apply in the corner, though. Santiago still charging forward. Santiago's tough. He's making this a rough fight. I mean, he, he can't go class for class with Zamorone, so he might as well go in there and just bang. Zamorone said that I could bang if I have to. He considers himself oh. a volume puncher who likes to throw in combinations, and if you're a volume puncher, being in the Robert Garcia Academy is probably a pretty good place for you to hone those skills 
as he uncorks another three punch combination and a right hook that connects. Is that really showing himself to be more of a counter puncher than, than a volume puncher? He's looking very, very sharp with that, that left hand over the top that has been spinning the head of Santiago around. Santiago landed some good body shots on, on, on the flanks of San Maron. Oh, he certainly is. Santiago doing some good hustle work on the inside, but that right hook to the body from Zamarone and a chopping left hand snaps the head back oh. of Santiago once again. But look at Santiago. Santiago bounced off the ropes and landed a good right hand. Right, almost a, a slingshot right hand there from Santiago. Can't count Santiago out yet. He is still throwing leather. Good check hook there from Zamarone. Santiago will get a little heavy over that front foot. Falling off balance. Does it again. It gets caught with a left hand over the top. And that's a weapon that has not missed for Zamarone thus far. That step back, counter left hand, looks for it again. Santiago getting a little busier with his jab, and that right hand just continues to poke through for Santiago. You know what it is, Corey? It's Zamorón's looking for the knockout too much, and he's allowing opportunities for Santiago to get through. If I'm in the corner of Zamorón, I'm telling him, hey, man, let's go back to the jab, find your distance again like you did in round number one. Don't just look for the knockout shot. This guy's tough. Good counter right hook there from Zamorón. Oh, that just grazed Santiago there. Another big left hand. Counter left hook there from Santiago as Zamorone whiffed on the uppercut. Another thing Zamorone should focus on a little more is the body. He's not throwing many body punches at all. Santiago, on the other hand, has thrown some effective body shots with both hands. Another good round for Zamorone, but Santiago certainly having his moments. Well, Galau Yafai and Tommy Frank contest the international WBC flyweight title as Matchroom Boxing returns with another installment of the Next Gen Series live from Birmingham in the UK on August 19th. Round three underway. Well, if you had no context for how this fight had gone, Chris, and you just saw photos of these fighters' faces right now, you might think that Zamorone is down. That's not the case, but Santiago has certainly had his moments. No, yeah, no, it, it's, I mean, there's been a lot of action Santiago has made for a good fight, but Zamorone is definitely in control. You know, he scored a, a big knockdown in the first round, landed some really big shots in round number two as well. Different approach here from Zamorone, as you were talking about, not giving Santiago a chance to counter right now, just purely smothering Santiago and going to that volume puncher identity that he said he kind of taps into. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the corner of Zamorone told him to switch it up a little bit, stop looking for those knockout shots, work on the body a little bit, fight on the inside, let those hands go, take some of the power off. Zamorone gets out of the way of a right hand from Santiago. Well, in true OTX fashion, we have a good fight as an opener. No easy fights here. Oh, just missing with the uppercut, but the left hand does not miss. And that one might have affected Santiago, who's a little bit stationary right now, as you see the head snapping back along the ropes. You know, the major difference in the game plan for Zamorón this round has been the body shots. And now we're starting to see Santiago start to wilt. He was taking those head shots well in the last round, but you start softening up that body. The bravery is still there from Santiago, but the body language is changing as Zamorone is all over him here in the third round. And now we're seeing that volume puncher style, which he mentioned. Zamorone has brought a crowd out here in Atlanta. You hear chants of Javi. 
throughout the arena. As Zamarone hunting for the knockout here in the third round. Digging to the body of Zamarone. Good right hook to start, and then a nasty left around the elbow of Santiago. But Santiago comes back then. Yeah, look at Santiago fighting back. Just when it was looking like he was weathered and ready to go, he's standing toe to toe with Zamarone in the center of the ring. A ton of heart from Santiago. He's been hit with big shots all night long, but still throws back. Again, lands a good right hand again. Final 30 seconds here of round three, a round that looked like it might be the final one about a minute ago in this round, but Santiago manages to weather the storm as he eats another step back left hand from Zamorone. But again, not much jabbing from Zamorone. I think that could really set up some of these shots, because at this point, Santiago was seeing the punches coming. They were landing heavy and hard. But it's those shots you don't see that hurt you the most. And the jab can hide those power shots. Fourth and final round here in our opening contest between Javier Zamorone and Sebastian Santiago. You see the stands starting to fill up here at the OTE Arena, which is sold out once again here tonight. And uh, I think next week is almost sold out already. Ooh, good body shot there from Santiago. Yeah, the town is a buzz. You know, doing these back-to-back-to-back -back -back weekends was a smart move by OTX. Santiago trying to come over the top with that left hook. Banks away to the body. See a little bit of an abrasion on the outside of that right eye of Javier Zamorone as well, in addition to the swelling. Santiago goes back downstairs to the body. Yeah, it makes me think if that's from a clash of heads, because there hasn't been a lot of left hook traffic coming from Santiago. It's been mostly the right hands that have been finding success. Big swing and a miss there from Santiago. At the same time, I don't remember us seeing any indication that it was a head clash, so we kind of have to assume that it might have been a shot or would be scored that way. Ooh, huge left hand there from Zamorone. Santiago, you know, it's almost like he felt that left hand in the opening round, went to the canvas, and then said, okay, I can take this. Sometimes that happens. You get right. hit with a shot early that hurts you, and then you get hit with harder shots later, and you're fine. Nice counter shot there from Santiago. Oh. Zamorone starting to play around a little bit, hands to the side, trying to find his flow here in the fourth round. You know, this is the kind of stuff that I think he needed to do earlier on. He was looking too much for the knockout, and it took away from his style. But I'm also one of those guys who, who likes prospects to go rounds. I think it's important for them to get this pro experience under their belt with tough guys like this, not just guys who are going to look for a place to lay down. Zamorone really dug that right hook into the midsection of Santiago. You saw the face of Santiago change a little bit, and he eats a nice left hand there a moment ago, and now a right hook. Oh, Santiago looks hurt. That right hook affected the legs. Santiago somehow absorbing this punishment, but that left hand rocks him back. Zamorone's not missing now, that left hand. The referee looked like he was having a close look there. Short time here. Zamorone could push for the knockout. Time not on his side, but of course there is a financial incentive if he can pull it off. A knockout bonus 
an extra knockout bonus if he can do it in the fourth round. The final 10 seconds of this fight. As Sebastian Santiago certainly gave it a go, gave Javier Zamorone some tough rounds and certainly some things to go back and look at as well. Yeah, absolutely, like I said. Ladies and gentlemen, after going the distance inside the OTX ring, all three judges turn in identical scores of 40 to 35 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Still undefeated, Javi El Guerito Samaro. So the latest prospect out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Javier Zamarone, improves to 5-0.